You want to try your hand at cleaning your own antique needle points? Well, good information coming up. Stay tuned. People have asked us, how do they go about cleaning their own needlepoint weaves, the needlepoint covers for upholstery, seat covers, pieces like this that you see right here that they've woven antiques usually. They've been in the family for years and years. They wonder how do they go about keeping them clean. First tip on this, and the most important, is to always, always pick the right detergent to clean something like this and then test it for color fastness. Test each individual piece you're planning on cleaning. I'm going to show you how to do that. Coming right up. Start with a clean white terry cloth. We like this product. This is the detergent we plan on using to clean these three pieces right here that came in from one of our customers. Mix it, it go, uh, one gallon goes a long way, about an ounce per gallon of water, maybe an ounce and a half per one gallon of warm water. And this is not the cleaning phase, this is just the overnight color fastness test phase. So what we did is we took a, a terry like this, we mix the detergent in a peel like this and we wring it out. Most of the water is out, but it's still very damp. Then we fold it like this and put it on this piece making sure we make contact with every color there is. Let it sit overnight. We did it with these two pieces too. This larger piece and this pin cushion cover right here with the fish design. 24 hours later we come back, we pull this back. The camera most likely can't see it, but there are shades of this deep blue and some of this deeper red of the two red colors, this deeper red in there. Maybe the camera can pick this up right there, I'm not sure. There is some red. There's, that's not enough for us to be too concerned about because when we clean and then we rinse that off using an acidic based rinse and those procedures will be coming up. You have to make sure once the rinsing is done you dry it quickly. That's where the problems come in during extended dry times. And on this I would say there's really no color transfer from here to here. Now if there is color transfer, and a lot of it, and sometimes it happens not in 24 hours, but it can happen in 15 or 20 or 30 minutes, then you're taking a chance putting these detergents on here. You really have to put dye stabilizers, and there's a whole process that goes through with trying to clean these. You could also try cleaning them with solvents, which is much less risky. Solvents are dry, um, dry, so, dry cleaning solvents that we use on some of these pieces. They're not as effective at removing soil, but they're better than not cleaning. But water-based cleaning is the way to go. This is how you test and the procedure for you to try to clean these at home coming right up. Hey, if you like what you've seen so far, give us a thumbs up. We really appreciate it. You can also leave a comment below. We've completed the overnight test for dye stability on the three pieces. Now is the time to actually get to the cleaning part. So what we're going to do is we're going to focus on this piece right here first. And we're going to show you how you would do a basic maintenance cleaning on this. There are pieces we see with all kinds of food spills or wine spills. This is just to get the impacted or embedded soils out. Also these pieces have been thoroughly hand vacuumed with a small detail tool to remove as much dry soil as possible. Hand vac. Dry soil removal is very important, and then you would go into the cleaning. So what we like to do is we use the same product that we showed you in the test, which is a fine fabric shampoo here. Diluted according to directions, and we like to apply it with a, a natural sponge, and then for agitation, we'll use a horsehair brush. This one's a little bit more aggressive, but we like this one. So what you would do, instead of completely wetting out the whole piece, you would put the sponge in here, you would create a froth like this. You would blot and try to work the detergent in evenly, and that's important, evenly throughout the whole piece. And again, it's better to do several gentle cleanings, low moisture cleanings, than it is to do one big 
hit it with a fire hose wet cleaning because that's when the problems can come in. You want to be very careful. Once you do that, then you would use a gentle brush, a horsehair brush like this, and using circular motions, go through the piece evenly. And there are spots on here that are probably beverage, coffee and whatnot. We'll have to come after those later. You have to determine how long you're gonna leave this damp before you try to rinse it. We're gonna hand rinse it today using something as simple as a shop vac and the all fiber rinse, which is diluted in the spray bottle here. My, my suggestion would be no more than 10 to 15 minutes, let it dwell. And the simple rinsing, what you're gonna do is use the shop vac, simple, simple $40 shop vac and a spray bottle with this detergent. You're gonna use them as an extractor. If you don't have some kind of a Bissell machine or an extraction machine that you can use on this, you can do it by hand. It's pretty simple, but you have to be thorough. It'll take a little bit more time. And what you're essentially gonna do is wet an area out in a piece this size, maybe I would do half at a time. Wet this out with the all fiber rinse. This is an acidic rinse, which is great for removing the residual soil and detergents. Wet it out with this and follow it with the suction with the wet vac. Make sure your shop vac is wet capable. So we're gonna show you how to do that right now and the accompanying noise unfortunately goes along with it. We sped up the video a little bit. You can see what you, the goal is to apply the rinse agent evenly and then extract it off. You'd use a typical spray bottle, diluted according to directions, that's the all fiber rinse. Nice, even, dry strokes, overlap both front and back and left to right. Spray what you need to get the detergent out. It's very important that you do a thorough rinse, leaving it in an acidic state. The key when rinsing is to overlap the strokes, the dry paths. I'm sorry, the, the dry paths with this shop vac. Overlap them so if you were to concentrate on one half and then move to the other half, this area in the middle, make sure you overlap it. Wet it out with the all fiber rinse. A little bit of these detergents go a long way. I would, what I would do then after this, I would dry it, see how it looks, put a, an oscillating fan across it, dry it quickly, see how it looks, if it needs to be um, cleaned again, do it again. Again, another quick, gentle cleaning, even a third or fourth time if you have to, which is better than using high pHs and aggressive scrubbing to get rid of the impacted soils. You do not want to do that. Always pre-test. The, the main point, always pre-test for color fastness, vacuum before you put any moisture on it for dry soil removal, and then dry quickly. Any questions or comments, leave them below and um, we look forward to you um, answering them and helping you out if we can. And if you like this video, we'd appreciate a thumbs up, of course, and subscribe if you wanna see more videos like this. Thanks again.